All right, today I'm going to be rebuilding a carburetor on a Honda 4Trax 300. This is going to be for the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive models. Obviously, I have the carburetor off at this time, and uh, check my other videos on my channel to uh, see how to go about removing this carburetor. We removed it, uh, removed the throttle cable out of this housing here. We've got a Phillips screw and a, uh, a black tab that's going to hold this cover on here, and that's all you're going to have to remove to pull that cable. Go ahead and I'll show you how to do that at this time. Go ahead and pull that screw, lift this cover off there. Again, it hooks down on the bottom, so make sure going back together, you slide that hook into that groove there. And then just take the throttle cable, which would be coming through this port here, wraps around here, hooks into here. Just make sure you um, unscrew it with the, uh, the lock nuts here and then unscrew it out the threads on the top of this carburetor area here. Here is your idle adjust. This has got a slight bend to it, uh, which is okay. It's still You can still adjust your idle. And then you turn that, that idle screw clockwise, it's gonna raise that idle. Turn it counterclockwise, it's gonna, it's gonna lower it. Now I wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that your uh, four-wheeler is completely warmed up when you go to adjust your idle, or it's gonna throw it off when your four-wheeler does warm up. Essentially, by adjusting your idle, you're gonna be just turning this butterfly open a little bit more or shut a little bit more. So this is, this is pretty um, dramatic here, but you uh, when you adjust your idle higher, it go ahead and opens it like that. When you adjust it lower, it, it lessens that airflow through there. When you've got less airflow, you're obviously sucking less fuel up out of the bottom of that, that bowl there. Next, another little trick I like to do is take compressed air, and when you blow through this top port here, it's gonna raise your slide there, raising your needle and that's gonna allow more fuel to be sucked up through your main jet area there. You wanna make sure that when you do that, it raises that, make sure it slides back down properly. If it doesn't, you wanna go ahead and pull the top of that carburetor apart and inspect that diaphragm, make sure there's no rips or tears. And we will go through that here in a little bit. We've got your heater wire here, you just kinda of wanna push that out of the way. You wanna make sure you don't put too much pressure on those cords down, you break these nipples off the bottom of that uh, sensor there, or that switch. So we've got uh, your primer plug on the bottom there, and typically you don't have to do a lot with that. If your four-wheeler is hard starting, uh, a lot of times it's going to be your pilot jet that's underneath this uh, bowl here, and I'll show you how to remove and clean that. We've got four Phillips screws here, and these are going to be small screws. You want to make sure you've got a good screwdriver to remove these. Going back together, they don't have to be extremely tight. You're going into an aluminum carburetor, and uh, if you get them too tight, it just strips out threads and screws. So gonna pull that we're gonna dump these screws out there keep track of those there'll be four of them and then we've got our bowl here this is this area is called your bowl a lot of times dirt and debris will sit down here you start uh, going wide open with your four-wheeler pulls that dirt and debris off the bottom comes up and will shoot through these jets here if the piece of dirt is too big to fit through these jets it will go into these jets uh, and lodge itself in there and then uh, cause your four-wheeler to be uh, rough running or hard or impossible to start. So you wanna make sure that you have no debris down here in the bottom. Your overflow tube here, you wanna make sure that that is intact. If it's not, if you've got a leak even at the base of this brass overflow tube here, you, fuel will constantly be dripping out here. Next thing, if, you're, if this machine is being trailered somewhere in the back of a pickup, fuel sloshes around in here, it will bounce around and go down this overflow tube here. That's fairly common, um, but if you're, uh, if the four-wheeler's parked in the shop and it's continuously doing that, then you've obviously got a needle seat issue here, allowing, uh, not, not shutting your fuel off like it should. So you wanna make sure that you inspect this area. You don't want this uh, jet to be plugged up or this port to be plugged up or that fuel, that excess fuel, will run into your cylinder and could cause potential uh, damage there. So you wanna make sure that this is free and clear. Take carbon choke cleaner, I prefer this gum out brand. Make sure you blow through there, take compressed air, blow through there, and not unscrewing anything. You should, uh, uh, air or char co carbon choke cleaner should come out this bottom tube here. Now, if you want to drain your fluid for or drain your gas for the year, you can go ahead and take this flat screwdriver here and unscrew this um, screw a couple turns and that will allow fuel to drain out the bottom of your bowl as well 
and sometimes that'll take any debris that's sitting in your bottom bowl area here and suck it out here. Although if that debris is too big, then it's not gonna flow out through this tube and you're gonna have the same problem you had before. So make sure, I like to make sure if the if my four-wheeler is sitting for the winter or any extended amount of time at all, I like to drain that gas and you can do that just by unscrewing this. If I've got a problem with the four-wheeler running, simply draining the fuel out of this bottom screw here is not gonna do the job. So you don't have to turn that screw all the way out, just a couple turns and it'll start to flow out this bottom tube here. Check my other videos. I've done a couple of them on this primer plug here. I'm not gonna go through those because typically that's not where the issues are. Next, we've got your, uh, we've got a plastic tap here. I'm gonna let you look at that in this video here, how this sits and you wanna go back right in that same direction there. A lot of times what I'll do is just set it down there flat, just like that so I remember. We've got your pilot jet here and your main jet here. We also have a rubber, rubber cap here that we can pull off. We can blow through this with compressed air or carbon choke cleaner, make sure that's all cleaned out. Your pilot jet is here. This is a typically stock, I think, I believe is a 42. And then on your main jet here, I'll look, but I think is in around a 128. So we've got your main jet. And I'll hold this at a different angle. We've got your main jet holder here. And a lot of times this main jet holder will come out when you're pulling your main jet and that's okay. You just wanna make sure that you can see through both of them. Uh, when you hold it up to light, make sure you blow through it with carbon choke cleaner to clean it out really good. So dump that pilot out, same thing. You wanna make sure that you clean it out really good. Make sure there's nothing stuck, no kind of debris stuck in there. A lot of times what you can do is take uh, jet cleaners like this, all different sizes there. Make sure you stick it through there, run it. Make sure that you can hold it up to light and see through it. So a lot of times the best way to clean these jets out is something like this. For your pilot jet, sometimes these cleaners don't come in a small enough size because of the orifice size on these pilot jets. So I grabbed a, uh, a strand of a wire, say out of a, uh, a larger winch or something, just a tiny, tiny strand. We'll push through there with that. And sometimes it takes a couple times, but you should see through there. If you don't, you will have a hard time starting. Next, we've got your, um, we've got your float we're gonna remove here and underneath there is your needle and seat. Now, a couple different options for doing this. You wanna make sure these are aluminum posts. You wanna make sure you don't break those off. I like to grab a small pick and I take a small screwdriver and just we'll do one of those. If, if this has been out several times before it's, or it's a fairly new carburetor, you, a lot of times we'll just be able to take a pick and push it out. You just wanna make sure you don't break those posts off there and you wanna do it in the direction that I did because as you can see here, or maybe you can't see, but there are grooves here that kind of stop your pin from running all the way uh, all the way through, kind of holds that pin in place there, so you wanna push it out the direction that I did, through your fuel uh, inlet here, or towards that direction. So next we can pull our float off here. You wanna inspect your needle in your seat here. If this seat is squared um, or worn at all, if this needle is grooved or worn or sometimes missing this rubber cap, you wanna make sure that you replace it. Unfortunately on this model, there's no way to replace this uh, seat here and so you just got to replace that carburetor. You want to take and blow through this port here, your fuel coming in, make sure that your fuel or make sure the air and ch carbon choke cleaner can, can go through that passage there. That is directly, this line goes to your fuel tank, fuel coming in will come through this seat here and then your needle and seat will shut the fuel off when when you need it. You can go through all of this area here with your carbon choke cleaner, blow through it with compressed air, make sure that it's all cleaned out and ready to go. Putting that pin back in, slide it in as far as it'll go. I take a small uh, pick or screwdriver, just kind of tap on it very, very lightly. But if you don't push that all the way in, your bowl won't sit on there properly. Next, we've got our uh, pilot jet there. Slide that down, it sits right down there between that rubber cap and then that main jet. And then we can take and stick our rubber cap on there that we don't forget, that way we don't forget it. And then our main jet here, uh, we can go ahead and put that in at this time. And it is a 128 is the size on this main jet. Now, you might be in a different altitude, different riding conditions, yours might be slightly different, but I believe this is stock. So snug these up. Again, brass jets, they don't need to be extremely tight, but you do wanna make sure that they're not gonna wiggle themselves out. And then carburetor sitting this direction, like we had it originally, take and slide that uh, plastic spacer down on there like it should. The reason why you want it in that same position there is because 
this overflow tube here is gonna run right down in one of those grooves. So go ahead and stick that on at this time. You kinda gotta pull those wires out of the way. And then I like to find that groove in that plastic fitting. And then run it down there. Then go ahead and put your four Phillips screws in there and snug those up. Again, they don't have to be extremely tight. Next thing we're gonna go over after I get these screws in is your air fuel screw. And your book will tell you the settings on that. Uh, typically it's about one and a half to two turns out. Now when I say that, I mean you're gonna wanna completely seat your screw. So turn it all the way in till it's snug and then turn it a couple turns out depending on what your book says, either a turn and a half, turn and three quarter, or, um, or two turns out. I'm gonna pull it out and uh, let you see the order of um, parts here. So we've got your, um, your air fuel screw here. We've got a, a rubber O-ring here. This is your fuel air fuel screw here. And down below here, I like to take any, you can just take a pick, set it over top. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter. You've got a spring, you've got a small washer, and you've got an O-ring. Going back together, then you're gonna take your screw. You've already got your O-ring held on your screw there. You're gonna take your spring. You're gonna take your metal washer here, small little washer, and then you're gonna take your rubber O-ring, slide it on last. Now, to make sure you don't dump all this off going back together, I like to hold this in my hand, and I'll set the carburetor up like this, and kind of slide that from the bottom up. Do a couple turns in just to make sure those parts don't fall off of there while you're going back together and turn it. Again, you can blow through that area with carbon choke cleaner, clean all those parts with uh, compressed air and carbon choke cleaner, um, to which we already have. I just wanted to show you the direction of those parts. Completely seat it and then turn it out half turn, one turn and a half. And because that spring is in there, that'll keep that, uh, that screw from falling out of place. Next, we're gonna pull the cap, the top cap off with the diaphragm. I'm gonna show you how to adjust the needle and replace that needle. I like to take my finger, kind of put one on the top, one on the bottom, hold that carburetor together. When we go ahead and pull this cap, this there is a spring underneath here. It's not going to go flying everywhere. You don't have to uh, worry about that cap shooting off and taking out your face, um, but it is essential that you um, Make sure that it doesn't come off too quick. Sometimes if it does that, it can rip that uh, diaphragm. And also you wanna make sure you don't pull on it too tough right away because that rubber diaphragm in there is, uh, is crucial that there's no rips or tears. So we've got your cap, we've got your spring there. And then I take my finger there and you can just push your rubber diaphragm out with your slide and needle there. And um, you can clean this all out with carbon choke cleaner as well. You wanna make sure again and inspect this uh, diaphragm, no rips or tears. Now to replace this needle or adjust this needle, you want to make sure there is some spring tension there. That means you've got it seated properly uh, down here. And I'll show you how to do that here. Take a Phillips screwdriver, do about a quarter turn, and lift that cap out. If it doesn't just come out with your screwdriver, I like to have a small pair of needle nose pliers handy. And you can pull that, I'm just going to be able to pull that cap. I might have turned it too far there. Yep, there we go, turn it too far. So there's your cap there. You can see, you can turn it either direction, but it's gotta be a quarter turn, I believe, is what you gotta turn it. And I turned it, must have turned it about a half turn and locked itself again. So pull that cap off of there. Dumping this out, I like to keep a hold of that needle. That way it doesn't dump the needle out as well. And then there's also a small washer in there. So make sure you don't lose that small spring. And then I take my pliers again, stick them down there, grab that needle. Pull that needle out, there's your needle, and it's on the center uh, groove, you can see that clip there can be adjusted higher or lower depending on what your settings are. And then down below there you've got a washer. So order again, put this on your needle. So make sure that goes underneath your clip. I like to take and slide this uh, into position there, making sure your washer doesn't dump off. And then um, take that cap, and take the small washer, I like to set it down, make sure it sits in that proper area there. And then um, I take and put that on the screwdriver and then I take and kind of bind that uh, needle there so it doesn't fall off. And then I take it up, tip it upside down, 
just so that spring doesn't fall off of that uh, cap there. Going back together, you wanna make sure that you can push that in and out like that. Make sure that that is spring loaded. If it's not, try it again. And then I take and I fold that down, that diaphragm down because I'm gonna take and slide it on now. You wanna make sure that that needle goes directly into that center port of that carburetor. If it doesn't, take your fingers and kind of pull it into position there. Slide that down, this uh, rubber groove here is gonna sit right in that uh, carburetor groove. Again, having this folded down, that way it seats properly. Slide it all the way around there, make sure it's gonna sit properly in there. Take my spring then, make sure your cap, that tab there is gonna sit right where that rubber O-ring um, tab is. And then keeping my finger underneath that diaphragm, or underneath that slide, if I push all the way down, it's going to suck that diaphragm out of, out of its groove there, and it's essential that that uh, diaphragm is in that groove. And then I set it on. You should be able to feel that seat properly. Um, if, if it doesn't feel right, or you're, you can take your thumb and kind of slide that cap around, then it's not in the right position there. So then I like take, keeping my finger on top there and finger on the bottom. I take and at least get two or three screws in there snug to make sure that diaphragm is seated properly. And this one I have the, uh, the holder here, the hose holder. So I'm gonna do this one last. And then snug those up. So that is carburetor on the Honda 4Trax 300. If you've got questions or comments, make sure you leave those below. Uh, if this video has been helpful, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Please share this video. If you've got tips or tricks to help other people, make sure you leave those in the comments below. And also, if you've got um, videos that you want me to do on this model, I've got a lot of these four-wheelers. I work on a lot of these TRX-300s. And uh, if you've got videos you want me to do on those machines, make sure you let me know those in those comments below. Thanks a lot for watching.